Kids Online Family Experience. I'm Ms. Rachel, and so I'm so glad you're here today. Uh, Miss Rachel, where are you? Right here, I'm right here, don't worry, whoops. I guess I was a little bit distracted. I'm on the quest to find the answers to some of my most pressing questions in life. And so I've taken out all like, 319 books from the library and poured over like thousands of pages and given myself a bunch of paper cuts to try to find the answers to all sorts of deep questions like are zebras white with black stripes or black with white stripes or how to make the perfect lemon meringue pie or how many moons does Jupiter have? I am determined to find the questions to all of my answers as I seek for wisdom and for knowledge. Hey, does that word sound familiar to you? It should because we've been talking about it all month long. Knowledge is learning something new, so you can be better at whatever you do. I'll count to three and then I'll say it together. One, two, three. Knowledge is learning something new, so you can be better at whatever you do. And there's just so many questions I have, so many things I want to learn right now. In fact, I bet you have questions too. Why don't you take 20 seconds to think about some of the questions you have? Maybe about animals, or spelling, or weather, or baking, or music, or another country, or anything. See if you can think of a few of those questions right now. Got some questions in mind? Good. We're going to put on a one minute timer on the screen and I want you to find other people in the room to ask your questions to. Who knows, they might even have the answer. T minus one minute. T minus 50 seconds. Minus forty seconds. T minus thirty seconds. T minus twenty seconds. your seats. It turns out someone else has a question they'd like to share with us. Go for it, Pastor Ethan. Uh, Miss Rachel, why are you using books to find your answers anyway? Couldn't you just go online? Then you wouldn't have to get paper cuts or have so many books to carry. Well, Pastor Ethan, I like books. Plus, not everything in a book can be found online. There were some really neat and special books out there, and this one in particular comes to mind, the Bible. Speaking of the Bible, let's check out what our verse of the month has to say. The Lord gives wisdom. Knowledge and understanding come from his mouth. Proverbs 2, verse 6, nerve. Whether you look online or in books, don't forget to also look to God for wisdom and knowledge. There's no one as smart as he is. All right, if you're at home, press pause and try saying the verse while leaping like a leprechaun, waddling like a hippo, or jumping like a frog. If you're at Lake Point with us today, turn your attention to the stage. So knowledge, what is it again? Well, knowledge is learning something new so you can be better at whatever you do. And our bottom line or our focus point of today is, if you don't understand something, ask. Let's say it together, one, two, three. If you don't understand something, ask. You might have a question right now, like, is it time for the so-and-so show? To which the answer is, no, not today. We've got another video to check out. Your next question might be, well, will we ever see John and Brandon again? The answer is yes. But in the meantime, check out a couple of new friends, Zeke and Amaya. Welcome to Story Lab. This week, we're talking about knowledge while we take a look at the story of someone whose straight talk sent them straight to jail. Hey, I'm Amaya. 
And I'm Zeke. And we're talking about knowledge, which is learning something new so you can be better at whatever you do. Okay, so what are we learning about today? Not what, who? Oh great, we have a guest? Yep, today's guest is a super scholar. In fact, their brain power is about twice what a normal person has. Wait, I know who we're talking about, that famous person who won that quiz show like 70 times? Nope. Oh, uh, an NASA engineer. Nuh-uh. Well, uh, some professor? Oh, my uh, science teacher, Miss Grimes, is like a genius. Maybe, but that's not who we're talking to. All right, who is this super brain? Ta-da! Wait, we're talking to a, a baby? Well, a toddler. She's my niece, and her name is Eloise. No offense to your niece, but how is she a mega brain about anything except goldfish? Actually, Toddlers are incredible. Two-year-olds have twice as many brain connections as adults. Wait, seriously? Mm-hmm. A toddler's brain produces more than one million neural connections every second. Because these connections are where learning occurs, they allow a two-year-old to learn faster than anyone else. That's amazing. I know, right? Okay, let's talk to this little genius. Can you tell me what's your name? Eloise. How old are you, Eloise? Three. Three? Three. That, that is, is a big number. Can you tell me what's your favorite color, Eloise? Orange. Oh. Orange. Uh, mm. I love orange, it's an too. It's awesome color, and I love orange. What a coincidence. That's awesome. I love orange. What's your favorite animal? Nay. Nay? Nay, nay. Nay, nay. Nay, nay, oh, her horse. Yeah, that's the name yes. of your horse. That's so cool. What's your favorite food? Pancakes. 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 Mm. I love pancakes. Do you, like, do you like syrup and waffles with it? Yeah. What's better, pancakes or waffles? Oh, be very waffles. careful how you answer. Oh, waffles! waffles. <laughs> what do you want to be when you grow up? A farmer. A farmer. A farmer. That is awesome. <laughs> Eloise, can you tell me what's your opinion in the current state of the world? Mommy. Mommy? Mm, okay. Makes yeah. sense. Should ask her and stuff. Mm -hmm. Wise words. Wise words. <laughs> hey, Eloise, thank you so much for your time. Thank you so much for joining us. <laughs> Do you want to go get a lollipop? Yes. <laughs> Bye. Bye. I still have so many questions. <laughs> You're not the only one. It's time for the story before the story. Today, we're in the first book of the New Testament, Matthew. But before Matthew, in the very beginning, out of a deep, deep love, God made an amazing world. But when people turned away from God, the world was broken. God made a plan to draw people back into a relationship. So at the right time, God sent a tiny baby to be born in the small town of Bethlehem, God's very own son, Jesus. God sent another special baby named John to a priest named Zechariah and his wife Elizabeth. Even before John was born, an angel told his father Zechariah that John would point people to God, which is exactly what John did. And that's where our story starts. Take it away. Hey everyone! John was a uh, unique kind of guy. He wore rough clothing made from camel skins, and for food he scavenged crunchy locusts and ate honey from wild bees. John preached to crowds by the Jordan River, calling them to turn back to God. Then he dipped them into the waters and drew them up again as a sign of their changed hearts. I baptize you with water but one who is more powerful than I am will come. I'm not good enough to untie the straps of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. Then Jesus himself came down to the Jordan River and asked John to baptize him. It is right for us to do this. It carries out God's holy plan. As Jesus emerged dripping from the waters, heaven opened up. John saw God's spirit rest on Jesus as a dove. They heard God's voice from heaven. This is my son, and I love him. I am very pleased with him. 
If John had any doubts about who Jesus was, it seems they would have been washed away in that very moment. I mean, he heard God's actual voice. Soon after, John pointed to Jesus and cried out, Look, the Lamb of God, he takes away the sin of the world. After 40 days in the wilderness alone with God, Jesus began to gather followers and to teach and heal people. John gladly pointed his own disciples to follow Jesus instead. I am not the Messiah. I was sent ahead of him. He must become more important. I must become less important. Now, John didn't stop his own teaching, though, and he didn't sugarcoat the truth, even when speaking to powerful leaders. In fact, John came head to head with Herod, the Roman appointed ruler of Galilee. You have broken God's laws. You. You locust eater! I can do whatever I want! Herod was so angry, he had John thrown in prison. John, who was used to wind and sky, was now confined to narrow walls in dim light. He heard only snatches of news from the outside when his followers were allowed to visit him. Jesus healed a woman who's been sick for 12 years. He even brought a little girl back to life. Instead of encouraging John, the news he heard began to weigh on him, especially as the months ticked by. One, two, three, four, five, six. Soon John had been behind bars for, well, maybe as long as a year. All kinds of questions and doubts began to creep into his heart, like the Rats that skittered across his cell floor at night. When is Jesus going to start getting rid of the Romans? What about that new kingdom that was supposed to come? If Jesus is really the Messiah, why am I still stuck here? The questions gnawed away inside of John, even though he had actually heard God's voice he began to grow sick with doubt. Finally, John sent several of his followers to Jesus with a cry straight from the heart. John's followers found Jesus surrounded by an eager crowd. And as Jesus touched each sick person, illness dropped away. People blind or deaf from birth could see and hear in an instant. John's followers squeezed through to make themselves heard. Please, Jesus, John wants to know are you the one who is supposed to come? Or, or should we look for someone else? Now, Jesus could have been annoyed with John for asking more questions and needing assurance. Instead, Jesus offered clear evidence of God's work. Go back to John. Report to him what you hear and see. Blind people receive sight. Disabled people walk. Those who have skin diseases are made clean. Deaf people hear. Those who are dead are raised to life, and the good news is preached to those who are poor. Blessed is anyone who does not give up their faith because of me." We don't know exactly how John responded when he received this compassionate message from Jesus, but he could know that Jesus wasn't angry or annoyed about the questions. Those words must have been a, a breath of fresh air for John. He was still in prison, but he could have the comfort of knowing that Jesus hadn't forgotten him. And then in the midst of a, of a clamoring crowd, Jesus had stopped to send a message crafted just for John. It can be super easy to forget and doubt sometimes no matter what we see or hear, especially when things don't go our way. Look at John, but God won't get angry with us for asking questions. Jesus' brother James wrote these words, If any of you needs wisdom, you should ask God for it. He will give it to you. God gives freely to everyone and doesn't find fault. Maybe you have questions for God, like, Why is my grandma in the hospital? Or, Why did my dad lose his job? Or, Why do I have to go to a new school? Why can't I understand fractions? You can talk to him about those questions and your feelings. God might not answer your questions the way you want him to, but he will help you, like, Maybe by giving you and your grandma peace while she's sick, or bringing a better job for your dad, or helping you make new friends at your school, or giving you the courage to ask your teacher for extra math help. Asking questions is how you learn, so don't feel bad about your questions. They're actually tools to help you build more knowledge in all areas of life. It's time to bring it home now.
after a small group time so long as your parent listens to today's instructions. First, make a list of questions you have for God. Now consider where these answers might be found. In the Bible? Asking someone mature in their faith? By praying? Choose a few questions to take action with and see if you can discover any answers today. Now press pause, complete the activity, and then come back for the second set of instructions. Now grab some craft supplies and cut out a giant question mark. Then write out our bottom line on it, if you don't understand something, ask, and decorate it. Post it somewhere visible for your family to see and use it as a reminder to ask questions. It's one of the best ways to learn and gain knowledge. Parents, now is the time to scan the QR code on the screen or head over to the Lake Point app to fill out our online connection card. Signing our guest book lets us know who is watching and helps us stay connected to you. It also allows you to sign up for our latest Lake Point initiatives and opportunities. So kids, while your parents are busy doing that, why don't you see how many letters of the alphabet you can make with your fingers? all my family experiences on the YouTube channel or on our Lakepoint app in the family resources section. Thanks for tuning in today, friends. I'll see you again next week. Same time, same place. Remember, if you don't understand something, ask.